Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and uh, I have Jack Burkhart on here. And for those of you that do not know him, um, he is the leading writer. I'm making these 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 adjectives up, but he's the leading writer for for RotoWire uh, soccer content, and he probably has a lot of other great credentials which uh, I don't know too much about. And what I'm going to do today is what I've been doing with a lot of these other sports as. You guys all know, I mean, I'm a big fan of playing everything. I'm a big fan of learning about all the different sports in DFS. I I, I love tennis. Mm -hmm. I love uh, soccer. I love League of Legends. And the reason why is each sport is very, very different with respect to the skill sets needed to win, specifically from a lineup construction perspective, uh, knowledge of which sports require more correlation, which require less correlation, and things like that. So... Um, I, I try to have experts on here to talk about these types of sports because they're all in this, this weird range where they all pay like 5,000 ish for first in the big GPP. Right. And there's always some thing going on, whether there's a king of the pitch qualifier or something that's, that's getting a little more juice. And it's weird with the way the content works is there's not that much content on these sports between tennis, soccer, and league of legends. And then you don't know whether it's a chicken or the egg thing. If like the prizes were bigger where there'd be more content, or if there were more content, would there be more interest and that's the prizes would be bigger. So I've had people talk about League of Legends, I've had people talk about tennis, and I, I've become pretty adept at both of those sports. And I have to say that soccer, I feel a little bit lost. Um, and listen, I play, I win sometimes, I lose sometimes. Um, and part of it is because as you guys all know, I'm very projection based normally. I'm very numbers based normally. And in a lot of the sports, I could just access a projection set. I'm confident that I know who the best plays are. And I could probably out lineup construct people because of my experience being a hedge fund manager and like knowing how all that stuff works. And that's where I can get my edge. But in soccer, it's I, I feel as though I, I, it's hard to even know who the best plays are. Right. As opposed to some of these other sports like basketball, football, because everybody knows who the best players are over there and even MMA. But but to put the lineups to, together is difficult here. I think it's doubly difficult for me because I don't necessarily know who the best players are. And I certainly am not an expert at putting these lineup uh, lineups together because all I have is a regular optimizer. They don't have contest sims yet for soccer and things like that. And maybe that's coming down the road. Who knows? So the only place that I could even access soccer content, I mean, there, there could be other places, but RotoWire is literally the only place that I will go to for actual soccer content. Like every week, they have a a a, uh, a Premier League video um, and whatever else is going on. That's uh, probably the bigger ones, like the UCL ones during the week, and they usually have um, either some combination of Jack, a Blender, sometimes on uh, Ryan, uh, I forgot his last name, Adam is on, and they they give a very awesome kind of break and so it's a, it's it's a very much a picks video you know it's like who we like you know and and they don't really get into a lot of the details but but the really really great picks video i literally just like a five-year-old i'm writing down you know they like this dude they like this dude they like this dude and then what i do is i i also access projections at the end of the week i throw them up it's an optimizer and then i look say who do these guys like and then i just try to then figure out what i want to do like do i want to play defenders with goalies does that make sense because they all get the same clean sheet thing. It seems to make sense to me. This is like stuff I stupidly try to figure out on my own. And they do, if you haven't watched, they do a very, very great job of it. They're very soothing. And I'm a big, you know, I'm a big believer in analyzing the delivery of the information as well. Like they're very soothing. They're very calm. You know, e even when Blender is on, you know what I mean? It's a good kind of back and forth. The way I was about to say, Eric, you're the first person in the history of DFS to call Jordan Cooper soothing. <laughs> right, right. But that's kind of more of almost like a straight man, funny man bit, you know, back and forth. Um, but these guys are really, really sharp. And I know that a couple of them do other sports and stuff like that. So I was going to have Jack on here talk him, talk to me about his experience with DFS and about soccer and things like that. And I'm curious to know how you got involved in DFS in the first place because people, okay, people usually get into DFS in one of several ways. One is they really like sports. And then because they like sports, then they like betting on them. Some people like playing sports and they say, okay, I want to bet on them. Some people just like betting on anything and this is a good thing to bet on. And other people are just kind of like math data guys and they're looking for puzzles to solve, you know, and DFS becomes kind of a good puzzle to solve. And now that like you told me that you also, you know, you're a math professor as well. I'm curious your history, how you got into DFS, how you got into DFS soccer in, in general. 
Well, it's actually a pretty modest story. So I am a math professor. That's my day job. But I really don't use like advanced mathematics or anything like that to gain an edge on DFS, I think. Like I don't have like a great statistical background or anything that I could build cutting edge projections that are just like sharper than the field. I think that's a really difficult endeavor and it's one that's worthy. And a few of the very, very top players do that. But um, I am a math guy and I like games of competition. So fantasy sports became appealing to me when I was a graduate student. I learned about like zero RB. I'd never played fantasy football before, but I like football. I learned about zero RB. I'm like, oh, how would you play season long with zero RB? And that sort of kind of gets you into thinking about fantasy sports. Not only is just like picking players, it's about thinking of it like a game. So then I started, you know, playing in too many dynasty leagues and then COVID happened and in fall of 2020. So I'm a late adopter of DFS. Oh, um, okay. I, I just thought it was kind of like a, I don't know. I never thought to play on draftkings.com because I'm like, I'm in my, I'm in my dynasty leagues, which was fine for me. I didn't really get it. Like, I don't I didn't understand anything about gambling, about poker, like, you know, it wasn't until like 2020 when I read the theory of poker that I learned the term pot odds, right? I'm a mathematician, so I understood it right away. But it's like very simple things like the goal is to play plus EV lineups. I just that like never like washed over me. But once I kind of picked up NFL DFS, played in these beginner contests, I learned about Pete Overzet's content. I learned about J Jordan Cooper's content and I started consuming it. I'm like, oh, like this is a proper like competition. What's going on here? And I don't just have to know who goes off. I can kind of play it a little bit more mathematically, you know, just talking about correlation, rough projections, but making sure your lineups win when you win. So I played a little NFL and I thought, oh, I like soccer. Soccer is one of my favorite sports. I'll start playing it. And uh, I got crushed. I had no idea what I was doing. I was building awful lineups and uh, I found Rotowire. And um, back then it was Andrew Laird and Jordan Cooper. They were covering Rotowire. And then you know, I had some impression of who the best players in the Premier League were, like Sergio Aguero, Harry Kane, all these guys. And I remember the first episode I listened to, they're like, yeah, so Pedro Neto, he's this winger who plays for like a mid-team Wolves. He's a lock, right, at 10 and 10,500. And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, we can just move on. I'm like, what are we talking about here? So it was like, I learned that was just like a completely different game, even though I enjoyed watching soccer. It, there was going to be a lot to learn. So, Eric, one thing that you said that was really interesting is that – um you know, it's soccer seems a bit different than other sports. And I think it is. And there is a little bit more of a learning curve. So maybe that's something we can talk about. But I kind of was stubborn. I really enjoyed Rotowire content. So I played with a very small balance. I think my first deposit into DraftKings, my only one was $100. I'm just like grinding the quarter arcade, just trying to learn. I didn't really have much gamble in me. So I like just, if I lost 10 bucks, I got mad. But, you know, I kind of gradually rolled on. There's the big Euro 2020 tournament. And that's the first time I like won proper tournament for a few hundred dollars. And as a poor graduate student, I was like, hell yeah, I can go out to the bars with this type of money. And um, I kept on playing and I kept on enjoying it. And um, I think the fall before World Cup, World of Wire announced they were looking for writers. And I thought, what's the best way to become one of the best? It's just to put yourself out there and to, you know, if I want to really push myself to be quite good, I should put myself in a position where I have to be good. I enjoy writing. I enjoy analyzing. And I really enjoyed the Discord atmosphere. And I wanted to give back a little bit. So I took on that challenge. And uh, yeah, since then, so I've been writing for Rotowire for like 14 months. I got to do some fun podcasts. And I've started to take it more seriously as I go on, just kind of building up slowly, 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 slowly grinding. And, you know, now I'm playing contests I never would have even imagined playing uh, what, what, before. What, what, what tournaments do you play? You play the, you play the chip pass and the, the, and the, uh, the, uh, the MME and, and the qualifiers and stuff. And how many lineups do you play usually? So normally what I do, I can play the low stakes. So I'll just grind the low stakes completely. And now I play cash games. That's probably most of the bulk of my action, just playing all the featured cash games sheets. And then I can play everything below the $3 level. So I post head to heads, I play everything cheap. And then I play any of the lower rake, higher entrant um, double ups. Uh, the contests that are not featured double ups, like 11 man, those are pretty tough contests. The rake is pretty high and you're playing against some really sharp players. So I haven't been comfortable enough with my skill level to play those consistently. The tournaments I play, I like the scissor kick, which is a $44 contest. I like to build one lineup for that and enter that into a lot of single entry lineups and the king of the pitch. So I'll usually have cash games on one and then like a, you know, hundred dollars worth of tournaments on another. And then I'll, I, I still like playing these like 20 max little tournaments, but I'm not rolled to play the chip pass necessarily. So I'll just grind the low stakes. Now, when you play the, now, now when we play the low stakes, even, is there something that you can play that allow you to play like 20, 30 lineups, you know, within your bankroll? Yeah. It's the dollar step over, which unfortunately I've kind of outgrown it, but I still play it for fun. So well, really let's, most, let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second, because you know, the, 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 
there's two again even within sports there's two different let's not even call it two there's a whole spectrum of like different ways to construct based on what type of tournament you're in right I mean, how you construct for cash is going to be different than how you construct for you know a tournament with you know a thousand people in it or whatever it mm -hmm. is yeah and, and when it comes to say like how you would play a you know the gpp is more like the the, the, yeah. the when you would play multiple lineups i mean what a, what people do in a lot of sports is is they get projections or they add their own their own takes in them put them in an optimizer and at the very least run an optimizer with certain rules where you know uh minimum uh whatever 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 you would do and this is yeah again i have to go back in in the learning curve because it's gone so far beyond that in other sports mm -hmm. and you have to catch up in soccer to get to where they were in football like five yeah. years ago right yeah. um do, do, are you is do you feel as though i don't know you, you you feel as though soccer is is a is an optimizer type sport in other words i don't know how to quite quite phrase this the right way but i uh, i know exactly what you're saying and i think projections are really difficult to use in soccer because the player distributions are a little bit wild the way that points are scored so for example like a goal is worth 12 points you get 10 points for the goal one point for the shot and one point for the shot assisted and i think if you you could do this if you tried to plot every player's fantasy score most players on a lot of slates are scoring like four fantasy points in soccer. There's very few players who ones who take corner kicks and free kicks and ones who just shoot and cross a lot, very active wingers, people, players like Kevin De Bruyne, uh, who's injured right now, but they are able to reliably score points. And then from there, the splash score, it, it just comes down to in a tournament, did you have the guy who scored a brace who started? It often comes Bra down brace, to- Brace is two goals, right? Two goals, yeah, sorry for the jargon. But- um. And sometimes it just comes down to that. If a player scores two goals, you must have them in your lineup. And how do you really project for that, Eric? I It, it seems kind of difficult, and I'm sure you can, but simulations in soccer are really hard because in-game correlations depend a lot on the score. Like, depending on what the score of a match is and which teams are playing, that's going to change the correlation very much. One team being up 1-0 is going to be much different than another team being up 0. Like, Liverpool being up 1-0, they're probably going to try to score another goal, but it depends on the opposition. But if an underdog team is playing at home and, you know, nicks a goal against Manchester United, they're more likely to defend. So if you imagine trying to simulate outcomes and then trying to model substitutions on top of how high variance a game soccer is already. I think it's very difficult to succeed as an optimizer player. And I personally don't use one. I really don't use projections, Eric, which is kind of wild. I just kind of, I've played for a while and I know who projects well in my head just based on role. Like if they take set pieces, are they a volume shooter? It's something that you can get acclimated to. And you can look at our projections on Rotowire as a starting point, but I don't think you should just it should be like a starting point. Actually, well, it's interesting. It's interesting that you say that. Okay, because you know that's one of the things that I do uh, is uh, is I do track different projection sets to see how they like compare to one another. You know, mm -hmm. one versus the versus the other, and you know, and you guys actually for some of like the lower projected guys are way on the other end of the spectrum. Like a lot of other places will have guys at, like four and six or whatever, and you guys will put them at, like twelve and fourteen or whatever it is, um, and. and the, the interesting piece is is the, the sport reminds me from at least from a projection perspective of something like like baseball, especially from the hitters and, and, and hockey for that matter, because they are so kind of event driven that, yes. that you know, and, and when you watch uh, Jack and, you know, these guys do their soccer analysis, there's two real components to a guy's projection it's their floor and then everything on top of that. Right. So, mm -hmm. so, so there are guys that, just rate because of just the way they play and whatever to get a lot of just crap along the way. It's the best yep. way I can put it, you know, like empty calorie fantasy points. Yeah, they'll, they'll take corner kicks because that's their role, you know, they'll, and it's like, they, 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 it's, it's, it's an amazing thing that you get points for something. You just get like assigned to do, you know, like someone says, take a corner. You just got points. It's not even yeah. like a running back where I give you the ball and you're guaranteed points. You know, you, you tell a guy to kick a corner kick, I and mean, that's going to be points. Like, that's it. So yeah. So, so, yeah. So, so you have this, the, each player has this kind of, like, floor, but then you have these, I want to say outliers because they're part of the game, but then you have these big jumps in points, similar to, like, hockey. You're every skating around, getting blocked, whatever. Somebody shoots a goal, that's 10 points, you know? Baseball, everybody's, like, getting, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out, you're out. And then if somebody gets a home run, I mean, that's, like, worth, like, 14 points. And yeah. even in football, like, you have running backs, they'll get yards, 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 yards. But then whoever gets that touchdown, that's like a very, very tough thing to, I mean, 
I don't want to say tough thing to project, as opposed to say basketball, where it's just everything's incremental. You know, that's why basketball projects so well is that everything's in in, in one point one one two three point increments, and there's not a lot of variance in there. So yeah. it's interesting that you say that that. Now let me, let me ask you this: If I asked the you know the top players in in soccer GPP, like whether they you know, rely on projections, make their own projections, do sims or whatever. I mean, you you have, you know, what, what do you think that, that the top players do? You know, and I'm not saying you're not a top player, but like, do you think that a lot of people like just know the sport like that well, that they have comes to them instinctively? Or do you think that people are, are, are working on, on big, you know, fancy projection sets that factor in correlation and factor in all that stuff? I think um, so there's going to be a few tip top players. So like the best players in the lobby who have been there for a really long time are like Ceramec, Redcoat, Moneyball, Pew Pew Pew. The first three of those names, they're the ones max entering the major GPPs. And I suspect those players have a computerized projection approach. And I suspect that, you know, you need an optimizer to build that many lineups. So I think they have a sophisticated computerized process and they've taken on a lot of challenges that modeling soccer has. For example, means are very weird and distributions are very bimodal. They're very centered around like six points versus 18 points and things like that. And I think if you spend a good deal of time modeling, you can deal with these things. So I think the highest volume players, the most successful ones are very adept at this type of projection approach. I think like, uh, I think Fear the Turtle 7, formerly of Rotor Grinders, now at ETR, I think he plays this way as well. But um, I think a lot of very highly skilled players, some of the best in the lobby, Eric, they play with their brain, basically. And what we and what the concession is, is that the, the brains say, look, I'm not going to use projections or an optimizer. I'm going to use my intrinsic understanding of the player's range of outcomes, which I've developed over playing for a long time and studying yeah. quite hard. And I'm going to be able to build a very good set of 20 lineups and, you know, about the hour that I have once lineups are confirmed, you know, you can do a little bit, bit of prep. So our own Ryan Belongi at Rotowire, he is, uh, you know, he plays professionally and he always plays 20 into this chip pass. And he never even will look at this projection page that you have up. Well, that's, so, that, that's, that's, you know, that's, that speaks volumes. Yeah. You there's know, a player. Right there. who, yeah. There's a player, a uh, Charlie, he works for FSI. They're a soccer operator, a bit more expensive than Rotowire. And uh, he's one of the best he'll play 20. And I, and I know that he just hand builds his lineups. I think pew, pew, pew hand builds his lineups. Mostly. I think he will optimize sometimes, but I don't, I don't want to even speak for that type of thing. I think Ryan's one of the best out there at playing tournaments and he is hand building. And I suspect most Play, I suspect that the very high end players who play the most action, like, you know, all these high stakes three bands, they have a computerized approach. But I think most, you know, normal people, the type of people who would listen to this show are going to be hand builders. And I think that you can still succeed that way in the soccer ecosystem. That's a, that's 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 awesome. Now, again, one of the things that's interesting again about the sport is that you can prepare right in advance you know maybe like a day or so i mean when but then i mean you really can't do anything until an hour before right so so you really can't do anything until the, the you know until the lineups are released so there's essentially an hour window to process all of this and um, the news is horrible if i can interrupt like it's not like the NFL where like the teams have to say this player is questionable in 50%. Like there's like managers in the premier league, like Steve Cooper for nine and Forest, who just like flat out lies about his player's injury status. So you can do all the preparation in the world. And then the script is completely flipped or maybe Manchester city randomly start like a $3,500 forward. Who's really young and plays for Norway. Well, if he plays for Manchester city and he's 3,500, that completely changes the dynamic of the slate. And everyone has one hour to just completely adjust to completely recalculate and recalibrate so that's why there's a huge edge in soccer eric it's not because some people project better it's because people are able i think to adapt to late news a lot better they're able to adapt to changes in what was expected to happen and just make strong decisions well we're, we're going to talk about how we can maybe look at some of the rotowire stuff to do that in a couple of minutes but like a couple couple of uh of points you know first of all what people want to know also is uh is because they they, they one of the reasons I started this whole project is people were asking, like, people know me from poker when I was doing DFS, they said, oh, what are you doing? How are you learning? How are you playing? Whatever. So they like to know what I look at. And I'm very, very open about how I'm just, I'm always learning and whatever I do, whatever, share with people. And, uh, you know, one of the things that you, you, I'll say unique, but it's cool about soccer is that for the most part, 
like all the games are like kind of going on at the same time. Like they're, they're all kind of in front of you. So, sometimes there's like a 45 minute delay in games or whatever it is, but you usually have everything in front of you. And so with, with respect to like the, um, the sweat, like for example, like what oh, do you usually do? You have, you have the peacock up on, up, up on the monitor. Do you have the TV up? How do you usually sweat the games? I got my laptop up. I have the peacock on the goal rush and I try to keep the app off because it's the worst. The goal, like, what's, the goal, what's the goal rush? What's that? It's on, Um, it's on. So for Premier League, uh, peacock has like, they go between all of the games. And so you get like. Oh, like the Galazzo for the on Paramount? No, but it's way worse. So, okay. okay. Let's talk about UCL. Yeah, the best okay. UCL is the best sweat in the DFS lobby. Like no matter what, no matter what stakes you play, it's just the most fun. It's in the afternoon. You make a few lineups and then you have Champions League going on best players in the world usually high scoring games six games going on at the same time it's done in two hours and on the Galazzo show they are pretty actively panning to all the goals and close chances so it's like uh it's it's really fun to sweat Champions League I had a good sweat for a king of the pitch ticket and uh, binking the scissor kick I finished second place in both unfortunately but I mean for like a half hour you're just like watching everything every time the screen pans so it's really exciting um and what's and what's the equivalent of on, on Premier League if there is one on Peacock for the Saturdays, if there's yeah. three or more games, they're going to do the Goal Rush show where they have one featured game and oh, then they'll okay. spend like 80% of their time there. And then if something happens, there'll be a ping. They'll wait for a stoppage of play and then they'll go. So in the Rotowire Discord, we call it the no goal rush because <laughs> you have to wait so long. But um, well, one thing I, yeah. I would say, by the way, and this is this is unfortunately something they can't really fix. Um See, one of the things that because DraftKings, you know, they're they're a sports book as well, they have to be really, really on time with their with their data and stuff like that. I'm just telling you guys, if you're going to sweat soccer and you're gonna watch the games, you have to turn the, the DraftKings off, okay? Because DK is way ahead of the TV. They're yeah. way ahead of Galasso. Like by the time something happens in Galasso, you could have been three other goals scored and the lineups will not even like are so far ahead of you. So it depends what you're looking to do. But if you want to really get entertainment out of it and watch the games, I, I would really just not have your lineups up because it's going to, it's going to ruin it for you. Yeah. I, I, I don't think you should have the screen up. Like it's uh only until you know that you're doing well. Like, you know, at some point you'll know that like, all right, I have like the two guys who scored braces, like I'm live. Then you can pull it up and you can just kind of see like the, right. the roller coaster ride that you're going to be on, but it's so high variance. Anyway, you can be winning at halftime and just completely brick and it can be the other way around. I thought I've been dead in cash games sometimes and I've comfortably cashed based on just stupid stuff happening in the second half of games. And it's soccer, Eric, most of the, go like, a high a higher percentage of goals than one would expect just dividing equally happen in the last 20 minutes so like you're sweating your goalie to keep a clean sheet and then like you know in the 95th minute someone scores a goal it just completely shakes up the standings because of how many points you know a goal assist and breaking a clean sheet are worth here's here's so, a question that i ask everybody that's kind of like experts in the non nor not normal sports in, in the in the lesser appreciated sports is when it comes to chalky players and one thing i will tell you is there's not a single site that that'll give me a reasonable ownership projections okay but 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 when it comes to chalk in soccer i ask this about every single sport what type of chalk and again it's everything slate dependent obviously but what type of chalk is usually considered good chalk as opposed to what type of chalk is usually considered fragile chalk um so I'm so first of all, the biggest contest in the soccer lobby are like 3000 people. So ownership is not so getting super precise ownership. I think you want to have a course understanding of it because you can't just play blatantly chalky in it. But I don't think it has to be a huge part other than like a very coarse understanding of ownership. And it's very difficult to project. I've been wrong before. I've written articles and I've been on a show. I'm like, this guy's going to be high owned and it's completely off. So it, I think it's tough to predict the lobby. But there are going to be certain chalky players, like I said. So to actually answer your question, I am extremely unlikely to fade set piece monopolists. So this is the type of soccer player who takes every corner and who takes every free kick, especially if they're on a favorite. So you'll open up GPPs with like 2000 people and you'll see like a player like Julian Alvarez, the top pl projected player. He takes all of Manchester City's corners and direct free kicks lately, probably like 90 percent of them. And because Erling Holland isn't playing, there's a good chance he takes a penalty that role is elite. Like that's like a Christian McCaffrey esque role to compare like him getting all these receptions. It's just so many empty calorie points. And then he's also one of the most likely players to score a goal. So when you have a player who has a really elite range of outcomes like that, and the 
again, depending on the contest size, right? Like most of my action is in cash games or like in a hundred person tournament, I'm never fading that guy in a 3000 person tournament. I'm usually not considering fading that guy. So if a Kevin De Bruyne or Julian Alvarez shows up like 60%, 70% in a tournament, I don't really care because the way that he's so much more, he's so likely to be in the optimal in so many different ways. He has so many outs to getting a high score that ends up in the winning lineup. And if you fade him, it's often the case that there's not enough forwards who can actually like score a lot of points, right? It might happen on a four game Premier League slate that only like three forward eligible players score goals. So if you have a player who has a floor in that type of range, then you kind of just want to take the points. So, it's already, so already like kind of following along to some things we've spoken about already, right? So it's soccer again, you have this, this, these two components to a guy's fantasy score. You got the floor points. And then you have upside from that, you know, goals, assists, you know, <laughs> red cards or whatever. Yeah. Um, and, and and so the, the chalkier type guys that are that are chalky because of the floor points, you know, you, I guess those are, are, are less fadeable. But so I guess I guess then to try to predict the extreme, like if you had a guy who's going to be chalky because he was, for example, uh, the h- highest likely goal scorer. You know, like I, I'll take Holland as an example because he yeah. shows up quite a bit. Sometimes he'll be, you know, he'll be, he'll be in a game with a, you know, a weak opponent or whatever, and his 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 odds of scoring a goal will be minus three minus three hundred. It's insane. Yeah. Minus yeah. three hundred, even like to score a brace or two goals might even be, you know, even money or something like that. Whatever it is, I don't know if it'd be that good, but but whatever it is, I would think that if a person or a player is going to be chalky because of that, it would be l- less good chalk. Because you need those, even though he's favored sort of to do it, it's not like he's as favored to do that as De Bruyne or somebody is to get like seven corners and four and four free kicks or something, right? Or Yeah, and it's going to depend on like how utilized he is by the field, and it's going to depend on the size of the slate. So here's a bunch of things that I can throw at you. Yeah. Okay, Erling Holland is, mi- is minus 300 to score a goal. There have been Premier League slates where he's like $9,100, and he's had those goal scoring odds. He's just been completely mispriced, Eric. Right. In that case, I don't really have a business fading. I don't I don't feel like I have any business fading that player because I don't gain any salary advantage by fading him. And then I just have to find another player who can keep up. Very few people can keep up with, you know, being like plus 150 to brace or, you know, even money to get a goal plus a sit, you know, something like this. If Holland is like 12,000 and he compromises the construction in a way where I have to punt a midfield spot, but there are high upside midfielders. And there's other forwards who can, even if Haaland scores 20 points, I can get a forward that scores 14 points and improve at the midfield spot. Price is going to matter a lot in that type of situation and someone as extreme as Erling Haaland. So a 12,000 Erling Haaland when there's on a six-game Champions League slate where there are many teams who have high projected goal totals, then you know, you can start to move around a little bit and try to keep up. Even if Holland scores two goals, he might not be in the winning lineup. On smaller slates, maybe Premier League slates where there's less goals, and I really can't find a goal scorer who could keep up with Holland, I'm more likely just to play him because I don't feel good about the alternatives. So when I look at a player like Erling Holland, I mean, this has been torturing us for this has been torturing me for years. Like you get it wrong and it's so frustrating. You're like, why don't I just play the best player? I want to know: Do I have players who can keep up? Or can it gain an advantage salary wise and be able to invest in other positions? So it's often more about the alternatives that you can play rather than just the player's range of outcomes itself. Here are three questions. You can handle them in any order you want or not at all or whatever. But these are my three kind of like soccer DFS, just, you know, line of construction questions. And after that, we'll get into the RotoWire tools here. So treating soccer like hockey, for example, I would imagine that it would be a good idea to play a couple of guys from the same team because, you know, one guy would throw an assist to another and that person would score a goal. It's good to have them. Okay. Um, that seems to make sense. Now, yet on the other hand, you can say make the same argument in football, but you don't want to play seven wide receivers with a quarterback. Right. So the question again is always slate dependent, but how many guys can you play without one really taking the upside from another or more to the point, from another player in another team, you know, whatever. Okay. So, so number one is to what extent is that correlation valid? Second question uh, is the other end of it. 
is the defenders with the goalies because they all benefit from getting, I call I still call it a shutout, uh, from getting a shutout. That yeah, being sure. just holding the team to zero to, to zero goals. Everybody gets, I think, a two-point bump or whatever it is. The goalie, as well as the defenders who are on the field for a certain period of time that are participating. So again, logically, I would think that all else being equal, and again, that's always, you know, <laughs> the great qualifier, all else being equal, it very rarely is, you probably want to play defenders with 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 goalies and with each other for that matter and the third question and this is probably the three big basic dfs questions is when it comes to goalies in general i mean is is it you know just what fits your lineup because the way goalies are, are scored it's sort of like hockey is that yeah it's nice if they get wins but it's more important that 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 they just get shots taken on them you know what i mean um so so you can handle those any way you want but those are the three just overall like line of construction questions that i have yeah, well, it's funny. In the Rotowire Discord, I am currently the coldest at picking goalkeeper. Everyone asks me which goalkeeper I play so that they can uh, fade them. I've only recently started running into positive variance. I'll start with that, though. Goalkeeper is the highest variance position. You get five points for a win, five for a clean sheet. You lose two points for a goal, and you get two points for a save. So you can get some pretty wild outcomes. So when picking a goalkeeper for cash games, I'm mostly just concerned with Uh, because cash games should be treated more different than tournaments. So if I'm picking a goalkeeper in cash, I'm fine playing the cheapest one and hoping that they just get four points if it means that the rest of my lineup is good. And if I have extra money and the pricing isn't tight, then I want to pay for extra win odds. But um, I really don't care in cash games. I'll play any goalie if I can defend the rest of my lineup. In smaller slates, you're more likely to pay up for goalie because the pay-up goalie is going to be a bit more chalky and the pay-up goalie is more likely to win than everyone else. So there's like a small slate dynamic, but especially when it's four games or more, I think you should just play whatever goalkeeper fits. And in tournaments, you should just make sure that you aren't having any goal scores against your goalie. That's such a negative correlation that you should never have like a forward who's going to get his value. That's based on if Yeah. You shouldn't have a forward that's in a four in a three or four or bigger slate. You should not have a forward who's going to get value on scoring goals and then play the opposing keeper. I think if you just never did that, that would be profitable. I'm sure there's weird gigabrain ways where it could be okay, but you should always avoid having players who primarily get there on goal scoring. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to share my screen. Okay. I'm going to have you share your screen and I want you to, if you wouldn't mind, I mean, I, I, we could do it for me clicking it, but it's probably easier if you do it. Um, yeah, sure. Let me pull it up. I'm going to have him show you what, what, so just as far as pure disclaimers and stuff like that. So I, I subscribe myself to Roto, Roto Wire. I'm a paid subscriber. And, and like most of these sites, I don't know what I'm doing over here. You know, I don't know where to go. Like so I, I was on that, that projection page. That's literally my default page to go to. And he's telling me that like, he never goes there. You know, so, 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 so what, what I'd like, and again, and I don't, you know, we're, we're, I'm not getting to get a, a bonus of any of you sign up there. I'm just encouraging you all to sign up for it because it's literally the best soccer content I've looked for, but it's not useful to sign up for it if you don't know how to use it. So, so yeah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to have him, if I haven't done it already. If you can uh, let me share my screen, Eric, and then I can do my plug. So my soccer editor, Adam, he told me I have to give a good plug. So no, no, you can plug want, all you want. Yeah. yeah so. I want to convince you that this is probably the best $10 a month that you could ever spend the suite of tools. And like the way that all the stats are condensed into one easily accessible location, it saves you like hours upon hours. So if you play every premier league slate, it's just a time efficiency tool, you know, all the content that we produce, if you enjoy our content, like that's just a bonus. It's really just about accessing some of these efficiency tools just to be able to say, these are the best plays. And then, take whatever you want with your process from there. So I'm going to try to share my screen. I have a host disabled screen sharing. Okay. Let me see how to do that. Um, I can, how do you just, I can just make you the host. I can just do that. But you make me a co-host maybe. It says make host here, or let's just see, uh, allow to record multiple files, put in waiting room. Um, we'll figure this out. It shouldn't be that hard. Oh, I think I I trust us, Eric. You you think so, huh? That's a, it's a big mistake. Um, and, and by the way, I mean, like, was it $10 a month? And it's kind of it's, ridiculous. It's, 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 I don't, I don't uh, know how, I mean, truthfully, I don't really, I'm a Is that just for soccer right? or is it just for soccer for all of Rotowire? It's just for I soccer. I think soccer is eight ninety nine, and I think all of Rotowire is twelve ninety nine. If you play Dynasty Fantasy Football and you want to see players like Target and Snap Shares, like, it's just like a really easy place to look for everything. And, you know, we have articles that sort of tell you how to play. So if you roll out of bed, Eric, and you're like, 
you know, I want to play some hockey today. Rotowire will have some projections and they'll have some articles and you can make a competent lineup and roll out and just have fun. So that's for all sports and you have access to all the stats. And if you want to build a model, you could do that. So it's way too cheap. And if you play soccer regularly and don't pay for it, I don't really think you either like have a really good process for finding stats or you don't respect your time. And I feel like most people do not fall into the bucket of, I have an automated process that collects all of my statistics. Okay, so you should be, you should be good to share a screen. Let's all right. See. I'm going to do it. So I'm going to see if I can find, all right, I'm going to share my window right here. So that's oh, look at that. it's already, it's already success. That's it. All, we it's did already, it. We're already geniuses. That's it. That's it. We're tech geniuses. Yeah. All right. How about yeah. that? So Eric, I can do a, do a major tour. So I think the first main it. piece of information, so let's just say I roll out of bed and let's just say I want to play showdown. I'm a Tottenham Hotspur fan. So we have DraftKings, Nine and Force against Tottenham showdown. This is our soccer cheat sheet. So if you're on the road, I can just tell you how to navigate. So is if you're on the, Roto Is this the default page? Yeah, okay. So hold on, let's get right to the beginning. All right, so. Yeah, rotowire.com. Fantastic, right? Right. If you want to join rotowire.com backslash soccer trial, we'll have to get that on the description, Eric. Go All right. Yeah. I'll hit soccer. All right. And then I hit cheat sheet. Okay. Now, what this has is that we have a live feed to um, DraftKings and FanDuel, if you play your DFS on FanDuel and even Yahoo, of every single slate that's going on. So even like 11 p.m. Liga MX playoffs, which are going on. Highly fun if you ever want to just throw, you know, 20 bucks around. What's this called? Which, which playoffs? Liga MX. The Liga MX semifinals are going on right now. So you can play uh, you can play DFS for Liga MX, but that's a whole other conversation. Okay. Okay. But we have everything. We have a cheat sheet for everything that DraftKings offers, as long as it's Champions League, Europa League, um, any of the five major leagues. So the leagues we cover all up on the top banner. So Premier League, Champions League, Europa League, La Liga, Serie A, France, Germany, MLS and League MX. So we cover all of those leagues. We have full stats for all of them. We don't cover things like FA Cup um, and other small things like that, but really like a majority of things, we have a complete suite of stats. So I'll show you what type of stats we have. Yeah, please. But um, so let's just say I wanted to research this uh, Tottenham Hotspur Nottingham Forest slate. That's happening in a couple hours. Um, so what we have right now is because lineups aren't out is we have, um, Adam Zedroik, our soccer editor for premier league and champions league. He gives the projected lineup. He goes okay. through all the news. He reads all of the pressers. This is his best guess at what the team is going to do based on all sorts of things. It's really hard in soccer. And I think Adam's one of the best at it. It's going to be not correct a lot, but that's because there's so many surprises in soccer, but right away you can get a good feel for, you know, who's out, who's it, who has injuries. And if there's anyone questionable and you have all the names of the players. Right. And just to show you the type of statistics we have on each player, I'm going to click on Pedro Porro right here. So you can just click on his name. And what you'll have is you'll have the blurb that you'll see on DraftKings if you click on the players tab. And then you'll go down and you'll see in all of the major leagues we cover all of Pedro Porro's aggregate stats. So right away, Eric, if you want to know what type of player Pedro Porro is without even knowing about his thing, I like to click this per 90 page just to learn about a new player. And you can see that, okay, he's not a huge goal scorer. He shoots a decent amount. I know he's a defender. So a defender that shoots, you know, you know, almost two times a game, that's quite aggressive. He crosses quite a lot. I see that he's taken corner kicks before. You can see if he gets yellow cards, just gives you a really quick impression about what type of player Pedro Porro is. Now, he's a very nine, attacking per, 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 per 90, by the way, for everybody, that's that, you know, the soccer games are 90 minutes. I always presume people don't know everything. So, oh, so please that, do, yeah. that, that, that if a player, you know, sometimes a player is not going to play full, a full 90 minutes, which is how much the game is. But if he plays for 60 minutes, this extrapolate, extrapolates if in fact you were to play so it's like kind of like per 48 minutes in the NBA, which people don't really calculate, but that's what permanent mm -hmm. is. Yeah. We have all of Pedro Porro's game logs from this season in the leagues that we cover, whether it's Premier League or, uh, well, Tottenham aren't in the Champions League, which is a big bummer. So you can get a feel for what type of scores he gets. You can see, you can get a quick look. All right, this is how often he's crossing. This is how many corner kicks he's getting, that type of thing. If you want to see if something's an outlier or if a player was hurt and is randomly appearing, yeah. you can try to see what they did last year as well. So we have all of the game logs just within one click. You know what? And we that, by the way, I'll give you a little advice as we go along the way. So if some, if there is a game, by the way, where he, where there was a particular guy out, that would be cool to have a little asterisk by there, you know, to 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 drill down into that a little more. I'm I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not saying yeah. it should be that. I'm just saying, what well, as a user, it would be kind of neat. <laughs> oh yeah. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you have to do some digging on that type right. of thing. Like right. I'm going to push on this. So like one thing I know, Sarah, is like, why is Pedro Porro taking corner kicks all of a sudden? Right. 
uh, when this hasn't happened. And you would have to figure out that the okay. correlation is that James Madison has been injured. James okay. Madison is the okay. primary set piece taker for Tottenham and um, Pedro Porro is now taken over. You can kind of get that. If you see something fussy, Eric, if you're like, what yep. the heck, what's happened in this outlier? You can click on the score of the game. There you go. And this is amazing. We'll tell you what the odds for each game. What we'll, we'll tell you what the odds going into the game were. These are the opta formations listed. So this is where all the players lined up. These are all the major events that happened, including substitutions. So you could see who's on the field. If you want to figure out if someone took a penalty when someone else was not on the field, that type of thing. And then we have all of the stats for all of the players. So you're able to see who starts. Now this, 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 uh, what's this called? That, that chart of where everybody is, is, is starting. I noticed that some places put that out after lineups are released. Um, is that, is this something that the coach like announces is going to be the case or is it something that that an analyst just kind of know based on the lineup is going to be the case? This is one of the most important lessons, and that's a great question. So when lineups come out, teams do not list the formation, nor is there any obligation to actually list the formation. Sometimes in Champions League, they will, but in the Premier League, no. Okay. So usually, so the main servicer for soccer is called Opta, and they'll do an initial guess on the formation. Opta frequently makes mistakes right away. And you need to be able to vet those mistakes. This is a big value out of our Discord. If Opta puts a weird player in a weird spot, you can come in our Discord and ask, is that the formation? And then people like Adam, who knows way too much about all these players and all their history, he'll know, he'll give a better guess about where that player is going to line up. But Eric, there's slates where sometimes it's like, is this guy playing as a winger? We've never heard of him before. And like, right. we just have to completely guess the formation. So that's how little information we're working with. Sometimes you have to rely on your knowledge of the other players and of other coaching tendencies, go on Twitter to try to find a blurb, see if there's some guy who's saying, you know, they're playing three defenders instead of two defenders. It, it's, and, it's a and, and, the form, and the formation is relevant because if we're relying again on, on floor points for the most part, um, we, we, we need to know that the guy that the player is going to be in a position to get those those chances you know so if we if in a certain formation if a guy like like uh, whatever is 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 like here as opposed to here he's less likely to to get the, the floor points whatever yeah. and and, and you're, you're probably going to get to this but like so you're, you're projecting a certain thing like before the lineups come out and i know that like in basketball for example they have this like some of the sites have, okay, so if this guy is out, then these guys get bumps. You know, if mm -hmm. this guy's out, then these guys get bumps. Is there something, and you'll get to it, I'm sure I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, is, is, is there something like that, you know, where I wish you could prepare in advance, you know, they're like, or, you, or. You can, you can do your best to prepare in advance. So like there's a player down here, John McGinn. So sometimes yeah. he plays as an attacking winger. Sometimes he plays as a defensive midfielder. So if I saw this lineup, but I saw another winger instead of Kamara right here, who's a defensive midfielder, I, in my head, John McGinn is downgraded. He's more likely to play as a defensive midfielder. So you do not get to assume that he's going to get nice attacking stats like a winger has. Whereas if more defensive players are on the pitch, maybe a player gets upgraded to the wing as well. So it's something that you just have to know the player's roles. It's sort of like the soft knowledge that you pick up as you go along. And it's something, again, you can ask in our Discord. Well, that's the point. I mean, if, if, yeah. you, if you don't have that soft knowledge and, you know, you don't, you can't put in the time to do that, you know, and this is a, this is a really, really big deal. And this is across all sites and all providers is the, the advent of Discord is a really, really big deal, you know, and, and, and uh, let me ask you this: As far as your Discord channel, is it is it subscriber only? Your Discord subscriber channel? only, great. yeah. Uh, that, that's great. Less less trolls, less less nonsense, less freeloaders. If you want yeah, to we don't we don't suffer fools in the Discord really too much. We we try to be nice, but whiners are usually. We had a couple whiners and like not even staff, like like other subscribers, like a DFS Chan, right? He does your esports stuff. Yeah, I think. And uh, I think he like once yelled at someone to stop whining. He doesn't even work for us. He just didn't like the vibe. So it's very yeah. much people who like want to know that type and, of stuff. And if this type of stuff comes up, there's usually one of you guys, not more, right, in, in the Discord to to yeah. to stay stuff like, oh, look, Kelso in, you know, or look, Kelso uh, is here. So Johnson gets a bump or whatever it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can ask that. And then I'll try to hang out. Like if it's a, a Champions League day and I'm working, right, I won't be there. But right. like, on a major Premier League slate, I'll be there. Adam is usually going to be in the Discord. And we have other users who are just really kind enough to answer questions for you. So you can always ask. You can always just, like, at me on Discord. I'll, like, try to. 
please don't DM me. So I would like to answer everyone's question, you know, in soccer so that everyone can see the answer. Like, I don't want to be like a private, a private line like that. Um, but yeah, I, I, we, we try to monitor there for questions. And if there is a question like that, we'd like to help you. Right. Because not everyone is sick enough to know what every right. position, every player is right. given on any formation. And if you just have a simple question, look, Jack, I just need to know is Lo Celso playing in a forward role. Right. You could ask me and I'd say, Yep. He's also going to get subbed after 65 right, minutes, right. I think. And then you can be like, okay, good. I don't need to know anything more about this guy other than that. So that's a very, those are like some important nuggets right there. But yeah, I've really hardly even broken into the tour. This is just sort of like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm here. Yeah. It's up to you when you're, when you're, when the lunch breaks. Over, so. Oh yeah. Well, I'll keep on, I'll keep I'm on here. going. I, I, I like this stuff. So yeah. this is the most important thing. This is the set piece chart. So if you click on a player in one team and you scroll down, you'll see the set pieces hierarchy. Every single player who's taken a corner or a free kick and registered a cross on it or taken a penalty, they are going to show up on this list. And you will see game by game in every single game we cover who took set pieces. So if you look at this name up here, James Madison, this is Pedro Porro's page, but James Madison has taken set. And pieces. there I so see you, when he was X'd out of those games, like you said, Pedro Porro is not Porro picked it up. Okay. Okay. Got it. And you'll look, okay. Porro took in this game against Arsenal. But if you look at the game against Arsenal, it was two, two and Tottenham were probably chasing the game, right? right? You're less likely to be, you're less likely to wait for your set piece monopolist to putz over when you're chasing a game. So you have to, you might want to like look into when they took the game, when they took the corners, what was the score? So you could have a better idea of when that happened. Well, that's, really, they, that's really a thing. So it's like based sometimes like whoever's close to the ball just takes it. And as opposed to, Depending on the score, depending on, you know, we yeah. want to wait for the guy to run across the field. Wow, that's, that's, that's actually amazing. Yeah. And that's a question you can ask me in Discord, Eric. Yeah. You can be like, uh, Jack, why did Poro take corners? And I'll be like, uh, James Madison was subbed off at tw right. F with 25 minutes left for some reason. And then, you know, it's just, you just move on. It's, you know, all the context around these things matter. Right. So from this, you would deduce that James Madison is the set piece monopoly taker. He's a specialist. That's his role. He's played that role for other teams. But Pedro Pora also has taken set pieces in the past. We sort of knew that when James Madison got hurt, Pora was going to carry the torch. Again, that's something that we try to cover in our content, right? So if there's like, we know all this stuff, right? You don't have to have it all memorized. Read the article, watch the show. We'll tell you who the key set piece monopoly takers are. If there's a weird change at lock, will tell you who it is. So like you don't have to be sick and like knowing all of this, yeah. <laughs> knowing all this stuff off the top of your head. So this is really helpful. If you want to know who takes penalties for Tottenham, we were wondering this for a long time. The Hung Min Sun took one. So now we know that Sun is the penalty taker. That's a key role, Eric. There's probably 10% likelihood that a team gets a penalty in any given game. That's a really valuable role depending on the price of the player. So knowing who takes penalties is important. So just knowing the roles of these players can get you an edge. It'll tell you players who have extra outs to a big splash event goal. And it'll tell you players who have access to empty calorie fantasy points. And I don't even want to call set pieces, empty calories. A set piece player is going to whip in more crosses and those are more likely to be assisted. So they are more likely to get a splash assist, which is worth five points, which is worth six points plus one for the shot assisted. Splash so, assist means assist leads to a goal. Yeah. I'm calling it a splash play because it's a goal or an assist. Like okay. it just leads to an extreme amount of points, okay. like very quickly, you know, it's an achievement for many players to get more than six points. So if you get one for a, an assist, that's uh, quite the start. Um, yeah. So that's what's on each player's page. So you get like a depth chart for the position. So This is the defender depth chart. You see the set pieces, you see their game logs. If you want to do any of that, you can download a CSV if you want to do any like analysis on it and you see the player's history. So you can see historically, you know, what type of thing they've done. If I don't know a player, but they have a history, it'll help me inform. Is this winger kind of just more defensive and useless or is he a player who crosses a lot? That's the type of information you can get when researching new players. So that's just what's on the player page. Um, more helpful stuff. We have this odds report on the cheat sheet. So instead of just opening up DraftKings Sportsbook and looking at all the odds, we take the odds and the tech lords, they just spit out implied win probabilities and implied goal totals. And the way it's done is the same every time. So even if it's not perfect, it's consistent. And what matters is like the relative gap between these things. So we see that in Tottenham have an implied win probability of 58. They're on the road. So Tottenham are going to be big favorites. This is their likelihood of keeping a clean sheet. And then you see an implied goal total for each team. So you can expect that this match projects for like a 2-1. Tottenham are the team more likely to score a lot of goals. So this is helpful on bigger slates because you can see who are very big favorites, which matches are projected to be close, and which teams are underdogs. It's the first thing I look at anytime I do a slate. I want to see who are the favorites 
And I've at this point, I've done it so much, I'm kind of used to what the percentages are going to be. But you know, you're still pretty surprised by that. Um, so this is very helpful. You want to play players on favorites who possess the ball because most stats like crosses, shots, shots assisted on DraftKings, all the floor points, they require that you possess the ball, the ones that are most predictive. You, know, you, you get like defensive stats, but those are hard to predict. You know, when you bring up like favorites and you bring up uh, sometimes in your in your show, you know, you talk about, well, I would want to play this team at home. You know, I don't want to play against this guy. I don't want to play this team on the road. Um, So you did mention that, you know, it's not really that big of a projection-based sport. And yet, on the other hand, you did mention there are some people that are making projections. Those types of comments, to me, seem like uh, items that are double-counted. In other words, like, if, 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 if a, a guy projects a certain way, then to also say, well, I want to play him because he's at home. You know what I mean? Or if a guy's projecting a, a poorly, but then yeah. I don't want to play him because he's on the road. That seems to be kind of double counting. And I guess the but but the question I have, I guess, is it's kind of interesting, is is what why is it, I'll give you another way, that home teams um I know why favorites project well, right? <laughs> um, but why do home teams project well? You know, in general, and this is something again. It's a it's an interesting question about of different sports because you know you have you know basketball. It's an indoor arena, and and you 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 know you can argue the sight lines are different if you're not as familiar with them. You're traveling back and forth. The the crowd is on your ass, and it's hard to play when crowds on your ass. And sometimes you know baseball, you might be used to a different you know uh, uh, sight line again, or maybe it's 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 the travel. What about like soccer even helps a home team? I mean, the, 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 the dimensions are the same. Um, okay, I guess the crowd's yelling, but how is that really affecting the play? Does it affect the calls in some way? Like, what, What's the advantage to playing at home, both from a regular perspective soccer, and how does that translate to DFS? Um, I think you might be right to say that there's risk of double counting, right? Because these soccer betting markets are extremely liquid, and I think they're more likely to be, you know, quite efficient and of course home field advantage is one of the first things that you try to encode in any sort of model that's trying to predict who's going to win a soccer match maybe one thing that i worry about for an away player as an as a tiebreaker perhaps eric is that those spots have higher variance if you're on the away team because you know the crowd's on your ass maybe the pitch is smaller like some teams do have smaller pitches than oh, other i didn't teams. know that is that true okay i didn't know that. yeah luton town plays on a smaller pitch than manchester city wow. so if you want to get really big brained i'm not sure how much it matters truthfully but i prior but usually home teams are going to get a bump and as a tiebreaker i prefer home team players to away team players because i think away spots have more downside variance i would say that might just be being, being traumatized. That's not facts based, but that might be one reason that people are concerned because I, I think you're less likely to, I think you're going to be more likely to not have the ball in an away match, but that should be encoded by the win odds in some way. Uh, so there's some risk of double counting. And, and, not, and not to get, to get too into the weeds here, but I guess the, the secondary question is if, if, if you have an, sort of an advantage being a home team is, is that advantage over, overestimated by the field and gpps making them too high owned or is it is that advantage justified enough to make up for the high ownership i guess that's more of a rhetorical question all right so eric if you want to play the um <laughs> the soccer showdown gpp do you see this clean sheet odds for the nottingham forest mm -hmm. their goalkeeper nottingham forest will be six percent owned or eight percent owned which is but if that clean sheet happens and the goalkeeper is extremely cheap i think I think the field in a showdown contest is going to more likely than not consolidate on the favorite a little too much. So I think there's some small, small, Eric, I want to say amount of edge in shooting for goal scorers from the other team, not shooting for completely exotic game outcomes all the time, but just, you know, giving Nineham Forest a chance to be in a 2-2 game script, for example, the field is not going to be as comfortable doing that. They're going to play as if Tottenham are going to win the game. Um, another time efficiency tool we have anytime goal score odds for every player. This oh, comes from DraftKings. That's, that's something. Okay. Yeah. This is from DraftKings who I think juice their numbers a little bit. You can compare them from FanDuel if you don't like a number. I wouldn't take this as gospel. I only look at players who are rated as plus 300 or better to score a goal because you get these, I don't know how they estimate those tail outcomes that well. I don't think it should really intrude too much from there, but um, these will tell you if there's a player who's extremely likely to score a goal. 
Um, so that's extremely important. And you don't have to look it up. It's just staring you at the face. So I've saved you a bunch of clicking on the mouse and a bunch of going to a DraftKings page. You can just see the anytime goal scoring odds and we convert it to a percentage for you as well. Um, so that's really nice to see, I think. We have free kick trackers. So this tracks the set pieces for all of the teams involved. And it tells you for each of the games they've played in the con in the Premier League for this page. It'll tell you who took, how many minutes they play, who took set pieces. So this is the corner and free kick crosses. And this is free kick shots. So some players are more likely to take a rip on goal with the free kick. So we also tabulate those. But all, I'm just... all, all set pieces are free kicks. So corners are what happens, you know, on the corner. Yep. And then a, fr a, a free kick is what happens sort of like around the box, like right. on the actual pitch. But what happens yeah. is in those is that you get you get points for crosses. And if a free or free kicks, like from the middle, I mean, it's like a dumb question. Yeah. Is that no, it's a cross. cross if you if you, you know what I mean like if you're shooting kind of towards the goal Eric, it, it has to be a cross if Opta says it's a cross so if a player's just outside the box and they do a little cross into the box that's going to be 0. 0.7 no, points it's crossing for the player inwards it. not just side to side yeah as long as it's crossing into the box okay oh, so if you're if you're right in the middle Eric right okay. and you do like into the box that's going to count as a cross I think and um, you don't just get the cross for a corner kick. Like you don't get a point for taking a corner kick. You have oh. to take the cross. So sometimes right. players take them short and that's really annoying. And that's, so when, that's, people why we tilt, that's when people tilt in the discord. I that's guess. when, oh, we, if, if we uh, have a guy who's taking his corner short, we're, uh, that's we it. riot. We riot. That's really especially frustrating. If he, if he, especially if the guy gets it short to, then just crosses it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And especially if no one played that guy. It's like a running back dropping a screen pass that was like okay. really easy to catch. Like it's that frustrating. Um, right. And then we have um, a really helpful tool right here. This is the player stats per 90. So what this is showing, Eric, is this shows all of the major player stats and all the fantasy scoring categories for the site that you're on. They're per 90 stats. So you can use this tool in a lot of ways. I recommend not taking it as gospel because it doesn't encode matchups. All of the players have played a different amount of minutes. There's a lot of context that has to be used in this tool, but it's helpful in the way that it's so filterable. So for example, if you look at the filters right here, I can filter by team. So I can just say, I want to look at Tottenham only, and then I can filter by salary. And then we have a little bubble here. It'll turn green if they're actually starting. It's yellow if they're projected to start in the game. And you can kind of see the prices. And you can kind of compare against the color gradient. So if someone is cheap and has green, that's a player who you can look into more. So as you're learning the player pool a lot, I think this is a really helpful tool. I use it less now because I kind of know more what players do right. and how they're going to succeed. But when I started, Eric, I was religiously using this tool. I was looking at exactly, okay, son, he shoots about this much. He's not crossing too much in this role. He gets the shots assisted. I really get a good understanding of each of the players at respect to what their cost is. So, so, you can these, find are not, so these are not just the starters. This is everybody... This is everybody who's team. played more than 90 minutes. Right. So this is there. so this would be considered, I imagine, like pre, you know, pre uh lineup build research. You know what I mean? Like uh yeah. like this is before we even know who's playing. Like yeah. this, this is where we would go. Yeah, um, Eric. So I wrote the article for the weekend Premier League slate. And so if you just pull that up because that's gonna have more games. Where's that? That's uh yeah, you just keep on scrolling. So it goes in chronological order. So you find EPL all. So that'll be your slate. And then where would the article be? That would be... Oh, the article will be on Soccer DFS. Oh, once, just uh, right on the homepage? Right once, on the homepage okay, okay. for soccer, yeah. And uh, we try to tweet it out. Maybe I could be more active retweeting it. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack Burkhart. And, uh, at Jack Burkhart, okay. I'll try, to tweet the, I'll try to retweet the article. I should promote our content more. Well, this is, what it, this is what the cheat sheet looks like when there's more teams on the slate, right? We see like the relative win odds. So we see that, you know, Newcastle are favored, but Manchester City are much more favored. You know, you have a much more full... Um, anytime goal score odds, but then you can start filtering the player stats. So these are the per 90 pages. You can just filter by position. So if you're wondering, does defender have a lot of set piece takers or are the defenders bad? So Eric, this influences your decision. If you want to go for clean sheets or not, which you asked earlier, like, should I be correlating my defender with yes, the goalkeeper? Right. Well, if the defender position has a lot of players with good attacking stats, then that three points from the clean sheet it might not really be enough. You might want the players who are taking set pieces like Kieran Trippier, who's not playing this weekend. But if there's a lot of attacking wingbacks or attacking fullbacks who can get crosses, shots, and maybe even goals, 
you are less likely to prioritize the clean sheet points. You probably just want the defender who reliably can score 10 points without a clean sheet. And, and what's, what is CC? CC is a chance created, which is shots okay. assisted. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. So that's if you like a uh, pass and then they shoot. So those are considered attacking statistics. Okay. Those are attacking statistics. Yeah. So like Trippier is absolutely elite, right? So as a defender, he's just so much more likely to outscore all the other defenders, even without a clean sheet. I'm never saying because I have Kieran Trippier, I want to play his goalkeeper. In fact, I'm probably most interested in Newcastle, Trippier's team, conceding because then Newcastle are going to attack more likely. And this means right. Trippier is going to get more corners and cross right. more. Just like basketball. So, yeah, yeah, I get it. And football, so he, yeah, you want them throwing the ball behind when you're behind. Right. Okay. Got so it. here's the here, so here's the defender, like just really simple yeah. think, think, think thing to think through. Is my defender, can they still score a lot of points even if they concede? Then you don't have to correlate with your goalkeeper. But if okay. you have like a center back who's like 3.3K, then it makes sense to correlate with your goalkeeper because they're more likely just to score three points and then they can double their score with the clean sheet, right? And this is this is just historical data, right? So like when you see like Jacob Murphy with 30... It's not predictive. Yes. Right. So that just means that he probably had a one big outlier game and what, why he's showing 33. Yeah, okay. And so you should check the minutes. One game, right, exactly. And if that tilts you, Eric, what you do is you can oh, just no. Uh, filter. No, 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 it tilts me sometimes. So you can just filter by minutes and you can make uh, sure that okay. the minutes are bigger than nine or like uh, 200. And now Jacob Murphy is filtered out. So if you only want to see players who have a bigger sample, you can filter that type of thing out. The main thing I want to emphasize is that you can filter by position and then you can filter by team. So I always filter by team when I write the article. Like I want to see Manchester City. The first thing I want to know for the biggest favorites, is there anyone underpriced? Because underpriced players on big favorites, you're probably that's like that's a good chalk to play usually, depending on their range. Underpriced of players on big favorites. Yes. Well, one could say that they're underpriced because they're big favorites. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, kind I, of. I got it. I got it. Okay. I'm just looking for pricing and efficiencies right, on the right. biggest favorites first, and then looking my way down because okay. those are going to be the biggest priority, and then whittle your way down. Okay. But you can learn quite a lot just by studying these tools, and it's a right. ton of preparation. You'll kind of see this is who we expect to play. You can be like, oh, Julian Alvarez. He takes most of Manchester City set pieces, and he's only 9,400 and they have a 2.5 goal total, and then you look at his goal scoring odds, and they're minus 135, he's the best play of the slate. I'll play him in all 20 of my lineups. Like I, I just don't fade a player with that type of profile. Even though he can fail, it's a question of even if that player does fail, am I able to find a player who also does well and build a lineup around that player that still wins? So the contests just aren't that big, in my opinion, that I'm willing to fade a Julian Alvarez for that. So, similarly to, to football, um, they have in soccer. They have a uh, they have some multiple multiple position eligibility at, at midfield and forward, and then they have a flex position. Um, now in in football, they went through various stages of beliefs of what should be you should be putting in the flex. Now the answer is always obviously it depends on the slate, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. However, like um, when it comes to and I guess it depends also on the contest that you're in. Um, but I, again, it all is being equal. Is there is there some consensus nowadays, I guess, in soccer as to what you're supposed to do in the flex, or is it really just? I know it really is like, slate dependent. I don't. There's there's no default answer, okay. unfortunately. Okay. It's okay. going to depend on the strength. Sometimes forward sucks on a slate, even though there's six games. Right. And sometimes on a two game slate, there's like five forwards you want to play. And um, it's just going to depend on which position is the strongest. What's the salary construction and stuff. Um, yeah, it, it's, you're just going to have to study the slate each time and figure out what the range of outcomes are. And, you know, like maybe it's maybe some slates, you're going to want to punt in a utility spot and in some slates, more balanced constructions can win. So it's just slate by slate. In my, I, opinion. I will tell you, I'll tell everybody, they do have uh, an optimizer here on Rotowire. Um, so, I mean, if you, if you wanted to use an optimizer to, to build your lineups, it's the same process as with the others. You have to just. You, you all, I don't know if you can upload your own projections there, but you could use their projections and you have to just make, I think, a couple of changes to make DraftKings happy with you. And yeah. then you, you could build your own lineups with, you know, with, with, with certain and with certain parameters, you could quote unquote, like a guy. I think that's an option. Yeah. Um, you could, you could, I guess that bumps him a little bit, I suppose. And then, yeah. and then you could, you could lock a guy in or lock a guy out, whatever. And you could also, you know, if you wanted to, and that's one of the things I do sometimes, if, if you are like a projections guy, if you're a sub, you could you could you could ex export the 
the projections to the CSV file. And that's one of the, these are guys, one of the, one of the projection sets I used to try to build some industry consensus projection yep. set, which, you know, as we've discussed quite a bit is not, you know, not the end all be all. Uh, not the end all be all. As, but as, yeah, you as, could, you could upload well. your own projections to the optimizer you if too? you want to use that tool. Yeah. yeah. If you want to use the rotor grinders projections, I know they project soccer. If you want to, no, there's I know also... that, but I mean, you can't upload it to the rotor wire. Oh yeah, okay, maybe that's, not. That's what I meant. No, 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 no. What I'm, yeah. oh, I, I might have said Roto Grinders by mistake. What I meant was Roto Wire. They have their own. <laughs> they Wait, have sorry. Their own optimizer. You can download Roto. stuff from there. They have, um, they, you know, you could you could like a guy, you could not like a guy, and you go right into, I guess under UCL or whatever it is. You could they have an optimizer list or whatever. Yeah. Um. Let me let me ask you this another way. So so, first of all, the first thing that anybody should do if they want to play. The DFS slate is watch the one hour video that they do every I call it week or whatever, but, but for premier league, they, they put it out. Actually, they're recording it now, right? They, they yeah. They're, they, they probably just finished recording the show actually. And Eric, and, we, Eric, you called this a pick show and I do agree. We do picks, but I think one thing that we do that other shows don't is we really try to accurately describe the range of outcomes of players, because that's the most important thing in soccer to recognize which players have a really, you know, like their 80th percentile outcome is just truly outstanding and which players have a lot of downside risk that maybe well, they're on a good team and can score a goal, but have a high chance of scoring four points. So well, we, we try to give a full detail of the distribution. I don't, I don't want to fight with you about this, but, but so I, I use picks on what I didn't want to make it sound demeaning or anything like that. But I, I mean, I went on a, um, uh, one of the, one of the podcasts, the LOLs podcast. And I, I basically actually have the opinion that very few sites, if at all, will actually teach people how to line up build and 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 they'll they'll do varying degrees of discussion of what the best plays are. Um and there's a certain degree of 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 need for what the best plays are. Honestly, like if you don't know what the best plays are, you can't proceed. But I think that 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 very few sites, if at all, actually give good lineup construction advice, honestly. And I do think that that that's where you guys can improve when, but as everybody can, you know what I mean. Um, when, 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 and again, you only have a certain amount of time. And listen, this is that would have to be, in my opinion, for for paid people only. Um, but what I was going to say is that they do a really good job of of of, and I say picks video in, in I don't mean it in the in a bad way because they don't say here are my favorite three plays. They go through it. They say this uh, this guy's probably a lot. This guy, you know, you could filter these guys in. These guys are probably good for GPPs. They do a tremendous job, and and, and compared to, to everybody else, which is literally zero, they mm-hmm. they're very honest about their stuff, and and they and they uh, and they're really really good about that. So I didn't mean to demean it. I'm just you know that's that's you know it's it's when you, when you watch the one hour video, you can at least have a sense for who who the plays are. The call it best, call it the the, the uh, candidate plays, call yeah. it whatever you want, you know whatever it is. And and listen, these guys can't very well just say who they're playing. You know what I mean? Like in every lineup, and they're very they're very good about that. Little little cagey, but in a good way. You know. Um. And and but but what I was going to ask is say is the first thing anybody should do is watch through that video. You know, take notes or whatever it is. And 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 for God's sakes, and this is the the, the problem with the industry, or whatever is the fact that it's free is is a joke. Okay. Um. The fact that all these those videos are free or all the YouTube videos are free is a joke. But the fact is, is that that's what sites have to do to get people to look at their site and become a paid customer. And that's just what it is. But the fact is, is that, you know, everybody should start by looking at that. So my question to you, Jack, is this. Right. So so I am a user. I am a I am. I, I decided that I want to I guess my first overall question is that this I should talk to all the road wire people about this is is what's 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 going to be on the site that you're paying for that you're not going to be getting from the one hour free video, which you shouldn't be getting for free, right? And you've done a little bit of a job with that. But my question is, okay, so I'm actually playing, I pay, I'm paying $10 or $100 a month, $1,000 a month, whatever. And I've watched the video. What do I like do next? You know what I mean? Like, like where, where do I now go to RotoWire? I've seen the freaking free video, whatever it is. And, and and where do I go either? Now, again, I, I know the answer already. OK, I think um, the, the answer really is is you probably get an insane amount of value from the from the discord channel for openers right? to be in there, which you're not getting without paying for it. Mm-hmm. But, is, but what is like among the this, the, the, you know, the actual site, you know, 
first of all, you show, show, you can show the article if you want. Is mm -hmm. there anything like after I've watched the video that I should be doing with this actual site now that I paid for it? I think you should be, if you're learning the game, you should be vetting why we said these guys are good plays and why yeah. we prefer them to other players. And I think you should kind of challenge. So if, if you're learning how to play, you should pull up the cheat sheet and you should look up the player's game logs and okay. you should see what type of role they have, how they score their fantasy points. So you really want to, I think that's like a good way to review. Why did we think, you know, player X was better than player Y? And you, if you take notes and you kind of like, why did they do that? You, we're, we're, I use the cheat sheet to research for the show. So you can maybe try to challenge that or you can challenge right. some of the assumptions that we went. So if I'm just, so when I was a listener and not like a content creator, yeah. I would go on after the show and be like, why the hell did Jordan say that he wanted to play this player over this player? Cause right. this player sometimes takes set pieces, but this player plays for a favorite and I would learn and I would do okay. my best to sort of learn. And then there's a ton of other tools that you can start looking at. Yeah, so, let's look at some you know, if Jordan is blabbing about floor, you can look at this, uh, I shouldn't put Jordan. We're all blabbing about floor when we're yeah, talking about fun. soccer. You can go to the, um, you can go to the, um, the, you can go to this page. It's called uh, DFS trends. Oh, you this can is sort by cool. floor <laughs> and you can sort by game started only. So when, Eric, when we say a player has a high floor, you can filter out a team and we can say Tottenham. We can look at floor points. So points which have, you know, goals and assists removed and like other like splash things and more just like the empty, the, the, the shots, the crosses, that type of thing. You can get a feel for when we say a player has an eight point floor, we mean that they usually score eight floor points. So if you look at Pedro Poro and he goes back, he is often scoring without scoring a goal or an assist this many points. So you can kind of get a feel for you know what the lower, safer range of so this, outcomes so this of page, players are. So this page backs out the 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 goals and the assists, pretty much. Yeah. So if you filter by floor and you oh, do nice. started games only, it'll nice. tell you when the player starts. This is how many floor fantasy points that they've scored. So we don't include goals and like yellow cards. I think goals, assists, and yellow cards. So you can just look for this by team. So if you're doing some research and we don't have a show, you want to do a showdown slate and you want to see, okay, who's the Dynam Forest covering? You can see, oh wow, average floor points for Morgan Gibbs White, eleven points none of the other players reliably score floor points, very, very low floors. And so you can kind of see, okay, if I'm playing multiple nine of fours players, they have to be like a goalkeeper who keeps a clean sheet or have a player who gets an outlier goal type of performance. So this so is, this really... is good. This is good research. Okay. So this, for yeah. those of you that are listening, so this is good research. This, this is, this is getting into the weeds a little bit, a little bit more without going bananas, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and again, you, if you know a little bit of basics that you're looking for some four points, this is a, this is a good little tool because, and I didn't even know this existed. You, you actually, I shouldn't say that because you probably refer to it literally every day on the, on the show. This um, is a, this is a nugget. I don't think this is as known as it should be. Yeah. And, and, and you know, this is just something again, wh whether it be to help you make picks on slates where there's no show, right. Or mm -hmm. like you mentioned, or if something about any of these plays just kind of like rubs you the wrong way or whatever it is, you can go into here and say what you know to figure out what to expect in these guys, you know, and, and where where and what I would think about when if I'm like thinking about lineups is depending on what one part of my lineup looks like, what my other part should look like. Like, am I do I want to play like eight guys that have just nothing but you know nothing but goals, you know? Yeah. And and, and if I'm finding lineups that that have you know maybe maybe the opposite. If I have guys that have nothing but floor points, maybe that's not the greatest for like GPPs, you yeah. know. And especially if, if they can't score trends, this is this is a uh, this is actually pretty neat. Yeah, so that's a great tool, and I don't think you can find that like anywhere else. Like it's a it's a tech hassle, and it's just done for you. So I mean, imagine all of the research you would have to do just to figure that out on your own. That tool is just there anytime you want for any slate in the major leagues we cover. What is, um, what one is more. Yeah, I'm just gonna see what his depth charts looks like. But yeah, show me the the thing you were gonna show him. The team trends. This is my other favorite tab. The team trends. We have team trends for all of the major leagues we cover, and it oh does God. a variety of stats. So, for example, if we talk about like playing minutes is very important in soccer because it's just like NBA, right? Like your projection is very much tied to your minutes, and um, you can see. All right, these are the players on Arsenal, for example, and you can tab over to whatever team you want. So we can go to Chelsea because they're really annoying with their rotation. And you can look at recent matches, how many minutes the players played. So if you're concerned about a player's minutes, I can say Nicholas Jackson right here, who's going to be a key talking point in the slate on Saturday. 
he has 90 90 but then he's like at 70 minutes you can be like why was nicholas jackson subbed off after 70 after playing 90 minutes i like to use this tool to try to help me figure out i can see every player's minutes on the whole team and how they've progressed throughout the season and so this is very helpful for me to see if i can find any patterns and how often and how long i can expect a player to play um, and if I can see any patterns emerging and we have team trends for all the stats, right? So if you want to see like shots, for example, Chelsea, this is just the shots for every single team. And you'll see normally it consolidates at the top, right? Mo like there's like four players that take most of the shots on Chelsea. That's very noteworthy. That tells you that those guys probably have the best ceiling. Those are the guys more likely to supply a goal along with another good fantasy performance. And you can filter this out by a lot of stats. You can look at corners, for example, Oh, no, I actually think I want crosses, right? You can be like, well, does a team cross the ball a lot? Because you, some teams are going to cross the bar, ball more frequently. Tottenham Hotspur doesn't cross the ball much because we don't have a big target man to head the ball to, right? But other teams do, and you can sort of detect, all right, do we have a team like Chelsea where a player doesn't particularly cross that much per 90 minutes? Or do you have a team who's going to have a team that has a guy who crosses all the time? Um, I think Everton will have this guy, Dwight McNeil. So if you look at Dwight McNeil and Ashley, Ashley Young, these are going to be players who cross the ball quite frequently. And so not all wingers are the same, Eric, right? Some wingers are going to be more likely to cross and others not. You can use the team trends page to sort of get a feel for how players are scoring their fantasy points as you continue to learn the game. All right. I'm going to give you. Um... I got two minutes left, Eric. Oh, oh, fine. so I'm going to give you a bit of advice and then I'm going to I'm going to then I'm going to sign off. Um, so what I would do if I were you guys, a uh, couple of things. Number one is first of all, prepare for it because it's coming. You're eventually going to have to get into the sim game with soccer, like every other sport. Um, they're all going to be there and everybody's going to have to do it, but that's maybe two years away. I would, I would make a video that's available on your site and promote more of these types of things. Like how to use stuff like this to, you talk about promoting your, 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 your site or whatever. Like actual little videos, like kind of how to's on, on how to make use of the site, I think That'd would go, I think would go a long way. Uh, you do a very, very good job of explaining it. And, and, uh, and I think that that would be very, very useful. You can put it on your YouTube channel. You could put it on your site. You can put yeah. it in everywhere. Okay. Sounds like a great uh, idea. That would be my, my idea for you guys. And I know you have to go. Um, and we, you should be, you should know that I gave up whatever I was, I was, I just yelled at Bob and we were supposed to re re do the uh, Saturday NFL slate, but I said, oh. you know, soccer's going over. I'm doing it. Um, so, um, uh, aside from that, listen, you guys keep up the great work. And for those of Thank you, you that haven't, you know, figured this out yet by now, I really, really endorse these guys and not in like the sales way. I mean, I literally use it myself and, 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 and at the very least watch their videos and follow them on YouTube. And for stoop for, if you play one freaking slate a month, I mean, if you do $10 a month and get in their discord, I mean, I'm a big believer in learning something. You know what I mean? So if you can't. If you can't learn something from that for ten dollars a month, I almost wanted to say I'll give you the money back. So, so <laughs> yeah. everybody, I, I would get in there. If you guys have any questions, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll try to link everything in the description. I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely uh, tag you when I when I post this on YouTube, and I'll tag you in Twitter and stuff like that. Thank but you. thanks for thanks for coming. Thank and, you, Eric. Uh, and go. Uh, who's gonna win tomorrow? And go, uh, Leno. Is he playing tomorrow? Oh, Leno. That's a, I like him. Good GPP goalie. First, first guy I threw up in. All right. All right. Thanks, Thanks Eric. Eric. I'll talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.